Hey guys, Captain CA here from Flats Class YouTube, and I'm doing a little bit of maintenance and caretaking today on one of the skiffs. But here's a question that's posed to me online at marinas, in seminars, um, just about everywhere I go because I'm a longtime guide. And it's like, hey, I'm thinking about taking the plunge. I want to be a fishing guide. So do you really want to be a fishing guide? Because there's a lot more to being a fishing guide than just catching fish. I'm gonna write down 15 considerations or rules that I think you're gonna to want to hear about before you take the plunge. But while I'm writing them down and sitting over there and gonna to talk to you about it in a few minutes, go check out some of the action from my regulars, Mark and Nancy Hunhausen, fun couple and great clients. Go check this out, I'll be back in a minute. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. Do it again, Nance. Good cast. Let it drift for a second. Hop it gently one time. Hop it, hop it. He got it. Real, 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 real. Set the hook. There you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. You did everything right on that sight fishing. Everything right. Way to go, Nance. Way to go. That's the color they want. That is definitely the color they want. Try to back us out of here just a little bit. Good job. You're fine. Reel down, close to the water, just like Louisiana. There you go. Look at that fish. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna jump down now. You've got him under got him under control. A little busier with two people in the Eldora today, but Good job, very good job. Reel down again. There you go, right there, you got him. He's just green, this water's cool. He was so excited, I got to see the whole thing. That's the best part about being on that pulling platform is being able to see stuff like this. Bring him right to me. And smooth. Too far right. Split the difference there, Nance. Yeah, you're right on him. Twitch it one time lightly. He's on it. Twitch it. Hit him hard. What a girl. You were on fire. It's definitely ladies' night. <laughs> Definitely ladies night. I'm gonna let the tide kind of carry me back here. Nicely done, nicely done. Sight fishing baby, look at the size of the dot on the, his tail. I mean a good one. Big old dot. It grows into that black eye. It will be a huge redfish one day. And because we're gonna release it, it's gonna have the chance. Wow, beautiful, coming down. Hmm. 
<laughs> Reds are hot today. Bring them right in here and I'm going to grab them this time. <laughs> hey, are they a fun couple or what? Mark and Nancy are not only part of my regular clientele, but they're fantastic friends and great people. Uh, enjoy every moment I spend with them on and off the water. And I'll take you back to more action with Mark and Nancy after I give you the first five rules. Rule number one, make sure that you have a captain's license and you're legal. That is important. Um, you do not want to hurt your reputation uh, by people knowing that you're guiding without a captain's license. Plus, there's a lot of things you need to know about the legality of being on the water and being responsible for people's lives. Which brings me to the second half of that first rule. Be insured. You need liability insurance. And you probably need liability insurance that's greater than 300000 which is the minimum probably going to need a million dollars worth of liability insurance because when you're running machines like this one back here anything can happen and the unexpected will happen trust me so we won't go too deep into that rule number two is you've got to understand going into the guide business you're not in the guide business overnight because you started a website and you're an avid fisherman and you're putting a bunch of picks up there that's not going to be good enough Here's what you need to know. You need to know that it's gonna likely take you a year and a half to two years. So you're gonna have to do this on weekends for a while and learn and build your reputation in the guide community before you can ever go full time. It's not, boom, I'm in business full time. I have a buddy at the marina or I, who's feeding me business or a guy at the tackle shop, guy at the hotel. That might happen for a while, but you really need to understand that you don't wanna just quit your current career or whatever you're doing and just take a stab at this because you're vulnerable to a lot of economic situations and weather phenomenons like hurricanes and things like that. Uh, rule number three, you better have a business plan. All right, the business plan is going to be something like this. You need to know all your costs, all your overhead. That includes that licensing, permits, um, insurance, fuel costs, expected fuel costs. It, factor in maintenance. You've got to take care of these machines behind you. You really do it. There is cost associated with that. And then set your guide price at a number you're going to be able to live with. Because I can tell you this from being in business for over 20 some odd years. If you set that price too low, it is hard to raise it with those clients that got you going. So set it high enough where you're going to have a lot of business that turns you down. Rule number four, respect other guides in the area. Do not sit there and think that you're going to make a living kind of, I guess, picking their spots and fishing alongside them. You're not going to do that. You're not going to make any friends. Trust me, all older guides, we hate younger guides for that reason. Do not do it. Procure your own zone. Figure it out. Spend some time in it. Spend some of your off time in it. It's important to do that. It really is. The faster you gain the respect of your peers in this business, the faster you'll start getting recommendations and referrals from those same guides that may not have liked you earlier. Rule number five. And probably the one I hear about the most from my clients when they fish with other guides. Maintain a clean boat. Clean boat, reliable tackle. There's nothing more frustrating for a client to show up somewhere and then the motor doesn't start or the guy's trolling motor doesn't work or his, his tackle is poorly maintained and you can't make a decent cast and it's making all kinds of noises and it's just rusty hooks that's the kind of stuff i hear about all the time don't be that guy now go back and watch some more action from my regulars mark and nancy and we'll come back and give you the next five rules i think will be important to you fire today oh, that's okay it's okay 
keep pulling left. Got a ladies touch for sure. It's a good one. Smoker. I'm gonna try to go back this way. Real down tight. Real down tight. Yeah, she's okay. She's okay. She's not gonna panic. She's not gonna panic. She's got them. Doing good. Doing good. And even though these airboats are messing us up, we can still catch them. down help you good job good job all right that's a short leash there <laughs> that yeah. is a fat fat fish bleed a little bit all right beauty be nice if you let mark catch one Nance mark still on zero it looks like <laughs> all right let's talk about client skill levels not every group of clients that are going to get on the boat, whether it's one angler, two anglers, three anglers, are going to have the same skill set. Some are going to be very good, accomplished anglers. They go regularly on their own with other guides. And those are the great clients that you love. But there are plenty of us that have to take, or not have to take, but have aboard newbies, people that haven't fished before. Um, or people that may have physical challenges where they can't stand up and sight fish. Don't put them in a position where they're going to fail. It's, it's important for them to have a good time. So if that means you have to go Spanish mackerel fishing or look for some Jack Crevel or, or a school of lady fish for a little while and then give them a little taste of that more intermediate advanced fishing, then do that. Don't think it's below you. Go do that. That is important. It is important that you bring the fishing to their level. And that's the way you build, 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 build so that they're going to be good clients and good casters later on. Um, again, your professional reputation is the most important thing as a professional guide. It's like a credit rating. So don't let your reputation be the guy, like I said earlier, that has the dirty boat or the ill-maintained equipment. Um, and remember, your reputation is on the line in your social media. So it doesn't matter how you think, okay, um, politically or whatever, but don't make that stuff known that much on your social media because that reflects on you and the brands that are associated with you. So be smart about your social media. And be smart about the shots that you're taking. Make sure you're shooting plenty of lifestyle stuff, plenty of stuff in your social media that's branded where they see the equipment or the tackle or the marina that you're, you're associated with because these are the people that are gonna help you get more business and get more eyeballs on your guide business. Um, another rule, it's your job to teach your clients. So there are going to be those days where fishing is not that easy. It's not a layup. It's not a slam dunk. On those particular days, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to teach them some knots, some casting techniques, what to look for. You also need to teach them things about their environment, okay? Um, bird life, history of the area, what's going on, 
this year, this seasonal situation right here is tarpon season. You know, you got to go through those progressions with them. Teach them what works. Uh, and also, it's your opportunity to teach them about conservation, about letting these fish, releasing these fish into the water. There are a lot of guides, and it's acceptable in a lot of zones, about just having tables full of fish, and that's okay, and it may be accepted in that area. But remember, when you lump yourself into that group, then you're going to be expected to produce that kind of stuff. So it would be sage advice from me to tell you, try not to do that, and then that expectation is not there. Um, invest in your business. What do I mean by that? I mean, spend some damn time with a quality videographer or photographer that can go out on the water and take some pictures of what you're doing, whether you take them with a group of clients or you just go out on the water, get a couple of fish releases, take a few shots of your boat, your equipment, you run in your boat. Those things are invaluable. They're invaluable to brand partners and they're invaluable to your web content. Do that on a quarterly basis. It's important to do that. Invest in some marketing on social media. Invest in some advertising, whether that be something as simple as rack cards and business cards that you're leaving at tackle stores and hotels, to you know maybe putting an, an ad in a restaurant or a hotel where they have their own content stuff uh, inside the hotel that's going to drive customers to you. And remember, it's not always about the fish. This is probably the most in, in, important thing. Um, it's, it's about the experience. It's about them having a good time in their accommodations, the, ho the, the food, the time on the water spent with you, and you keeping everything upbeat. That is the secret to it all. Now, I wanna go show you one more thing uh, that Nancy made for my, my Christmas tree. So. Uh, I'm going to let you go down here to the shop and follow me here in a second and we'll wrap all of this up. All right, brought you back down here to the shop. And before I show you what I wanted to bring you down here to show you, um, I got to say this. Remember, if you're going to take the plunge, you're going to be a fishing guide. Remember, you're trading in your passion for an occupation. It's a job now. So there's a lot of things associated with work now that is going to kind of get intermingled with your fishing. And that's not for everybody. Really take that to heart because when you realize that it's not you fishing, it's you guiding, that changes it quite a bit. It really does. But I wouldn't trade it for the world. I was born to do this job um, and I got a lot of discouragement from family and friends when I first started. They said that I was wasting my potential Becoming a fish bum, if you will. But for me, it all worked out. I'm living the dream. I truly am. I truly am. And I've met a lot of friends and uh, unique or, or crazy personalities in the guide business along the way. But Mark and Nancy are special folks. And every year she makes me a Christmas ornament. She ties a fly, if you will. Okay, so this is a fly. <laughs> And this year, she sent me this guy with a Santa hat. Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's supposed to be. Kind of looks like Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top who got seasick. He's so green. Or is it the Grinch Santa Claus? I don't know. But I know one thing. I'm going to make it front and center on my Christmas tree this year in the main house. And all I can say is when you have clients like I do with Mark and Nancy and, and probably dozens of others that I've procured over the years, that regular clientele makes it all worthwhile. If you like what you're seeing here on Flats Class YouTube, you enjoy the tips, the product reviews, the adventure stuff that we do, television shows, podcasts, subscribe for God's sake, please subscribe and tell your friends about it. Make sure you hit the notification bell because there's gonna be another tip in just a few days. Till next time, Captain CA signing off.